What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Like I said in my live stream, if you did not catch it live, I was going to likely do a voiceover of my free-to-play accounts run and upload it as a separate video. So you can see both my live run on my main account, which is on uh, video on demand right now on the channel, and then also my free-to-play account run where I use a somewhat different but mostly similar team. So I'm running this right side path here with future Ant-Man, Spider-Ham, and Kate Bishop. So definitely mostly different from the team I ran on my main account. Now future Ant-Man was my best option for Toad. I do not have a ranked up Prowler or Howard the Duck. So I could not use either of those champions for this Toad fight. So my best bet was future Ant-Man. I'll be completely honest here. I don't play this fight super well, but it does not necessarily matter. This is future Ant-Man's only fight. So as long as he gets through it, it doesn't matter how healthy he is because I don't have to use him again. And I frankly can't use him again because none of the other fights he would actually work for. So the goal of this fight is to just get Toad down using a champion that fits with the objectives and fits my team. So you can see I'm getting full comboed here, but Fan Man is a tank, so we are surviving. I've barely baited any special attacks here. That is just due to future Ant-Man's fantastic power control and also ai manipulation when he has that surging swarm it is really helpful for reducing the amount of specials you bait and the glancing from his armor as well as the armor itself reduces the damage you take from not baiting any of those specials so future ant-man is great he works really well here and of course you play this fight a lot better than i did but again like i said earlier the point of this fight, the point of this matchup with Future Ant-Man, is just to get the fight down. He's not being used for the rest of the path. That is the job of Kate and Spider-Ham to take on the remaining three fights. So Future Ant-Man being used here is just to get Toad down. So we're losing a lot of health here, but again, it doesn't matter. We just got to get Toad down here. And yeah, he's got a lot of control in this fight. You have to just make sure you're keeping up with those intercepts to invalidate that prowess. And then if you can, push him to special two so the prowess can be all removed. And however you feel comfortable dexing it, whether it's rooted or with the inverted controls, do whatever you feel like doing. So we're about to close out the fight here, and Future Ant-Man did a very good job. You know, even though I got hit a lot, I think I got hit 11 or 12 times in this fight, Future Ant-Man stayed alive, and that's all we needed him to do. So he gets that fight down, no problem. Just over two minutes, I think, two minutes, 27 seconds. And yeah, no problem. Now, this fight is amazing. This is such a fast destroyer takedown. It is one of the fastest Spider-Ham destroyer takedowns I've seen on YouTube. It is ridiculously fast. And I just get very lucky that he's willing to go for stand-up intercepts against the wall. And you'll see that here shortly, that he is just playing ball, and I capitalize on that wholeheartedly. And here we go. This is where the ball gets rolling. He is against the wall now. He doesn't go for my first one, but every other stand-up intercept against the wall, I believe I nail, or at least most of the stand-up intercepts against the wall, I nail for the back half of this fight. The idea here is to push Destroyer to his special two because the more bars of power the opponent has, the more damage they take from the Porker Poppers expiring, or the Porker Poppers popping, I guess you would say. So ideally, you push all of your opponents to two bars of power if you can help it. If not, obviously just bait special one and try and bait them within quick succession of each other. But if you can help it, push to special two and you're gonna deal a lot more damage on those Porker Poppers. So you can see we have like 15 or 16 built up right now. We go for another stand up against the wall. I think we even go for a relic here. And then one more medium. Oh no, we go for another special one for the taunts. And then we bait another special two. That's 300,000 damage basically. Now I'm just hoping he throws a heavy, but he ends up throwing a special one, which is totally fine because one more special one out of Destroyer, and that's lights out for him. Very, very fast fight. I love Spider-Ham. I wish I had him on my main account, but I am very grateful to have him on my free-to-play account. One of my first Titan Crystal pulls on this account was Spider-Ham. Right after Necropolis came out, I think he was my second Titan pull. So... Just really, really lucky to have him, and he's been so useful, and he will continue to be useful. So the final two fights here for the right side will be taken by Kate Bishop. That is just what I did on my main account, and she worked so well, so there's no reason for me to use anybody else. This team, I forgot to mention at the beginning, Kate and Future Ant-Man are both rank 5 ascended, and then Spider-Ham is a rank 3 7-star. No boosts and no beneficial synergies for this side, I believe. 
when I do the right path, I will accidentally have a beneficial synergy, but it doesn't necessarily matter because it's like a 5% fury or something negligible that doesn't impact the fight at all. And that might even be the case because I might be thinking of a different run that I did. Like I might be thinking of my main accounts run and not this run. But this moment here, this moment is pretty tricky, but Kate, once you get those cold snaps ramped up, it, she basically trivializes it. As long as you have him in the corner and he's throwing those special ones, you get those heavy counters after the final hit of the special one. You can even go for a stand-up intercept like I did right there with the crush because he can't block that. And this fight ends up being kind of a joke with Kate. As long as you're playing well, you're maintaining your cold snaps. He kills himself, basically. So we're just about to finish up here. One more special one from Mole Man, and that's lights out. And then we have the relatively easy infamous Iron Man boss. At least with Kate, it was relatively easy. That's what I did on my main account, like I mentioned prior, and I did it on my first try. This fight, it is basically the Jessica Jones fight, except easier. You just have to dex his special one and then heavy him, and that's literally the entire premise of the fight, is dexing special attacks and then getting in a heavy attack after you've countered and dexed the specials. So the threat here is you need to fully dex the special one or special two, or just dex the final hit of it. And then once you've done that, you get a grit passive, which allows you to knock the opponent down while they're unstoppable. Now that resist from infamous Iron Man's aura is technically like an unstoppable. So the grit gets around that because grit ignores unstoppable opponents. So this fight is very, very simple. It's very laid out for you. All you need to do is dex his special one or special two and heavy him. That is literally it. The one caveat for this fight that makes it a little more difficult for team building is you can't have a, ch a champion fight this guy that has three or more buffs because he will take no damage. So you need to be using a champion that has either two or less than two buffs on them on themselves at all times. Because if they have more than three buffs, or three or more buffs, should I say, then they will deal no damage to Infamous Iron Man. So do not use like Odin pre-fights on your main attacker and then go in here expecting them to work for Infamous Iron Man because they will literally deal no damage. I think the only way you could get the removal of one of the protection buffs is to get hit by a special three and then it removes the buff. So if you want to do that, you can, but I don't recommend it. So that was the right side with relative ease and then we have the left side here this side a little more tricky but honestly not that bad the the real pain here is just the mole man fight at the end and you'll see the, the strategy i employed for that fight in just a minute here so we're going with gladiator against adam that's what i did on my main account this is a six star rank five ascended gladiator so not as strong as my seven star rank three but he is strong enough to get the job done we are going for those special one full dexes after I dash in to close the gap, to close the window. And all we're trying to do here is build up that confidence so I can deal damage to him during his special one. As you can see, I'm getting two hits in right there. And then of course the third and final hit also deals the additional burst of energy damage. He has special two bias, which makes sense for the concept of this fight. You want a heavy counter a special two right after it finishes. And that allows you to place the soul barb like I did right there. And typically, if you're not trying to bait special one and nuke him down, you just kind of do the fight like that where you use the soul bar counter to prevent the pod from regening and prevent the pod from stunning you. It's a really unique fight. I actually like it quite a bit. I think it's a fun fight. And you can't medium intercept this guy. That is one of the nodes. You cannot actually do a medium intercept with Adam here unless the only buffs you have active are armor. I should have mentioned at the beginning that Adam has buffed up, so you need to have at least three buffs on you to deal any meaningful damage. But if you have three buffs on you and you medium intercept him, all of those buffs get nullified and you take a burst of 20% of your max health per buff. So Gladiator, if I medium intercepted right now, would just die and I would have to restart. But luckily, Adam is the first fight, so if that ended up happening, you can always just restart, go back in. I do like this fight. I like this fight because of that concept. And light, light attack intercepting is fine. That is one thing that the node does not specify. It doesn't just say intercepts. It says medium intercepts specifically. So light attack intercepts will work for this Adam Warlock if you are using Gladiator or another buff-heavy cosmic. Doing light intercepts will work and will be fine. Although... How you do this fight and like how the method goes 
you don't necessarily need to intercept because you're really just playing against his wall and going for heavy counters after a special one. So you don't necessarily need to, what's it called? Go for intercepts if you don't want to. So that was the Atom fight, not a big deal. Now we move on to Photon and Photon I'm using Odin for. I just recently ranked up my Odin and I like him quite a bit. I do like him up at rank two. And I think he'll stay there for the meantime. I don't think I'll be taking him to rank three anytime soon. But rank two Odin is great for content like this, where the health pools are, you know, towards the million, where that special two can really deal a solid amount of burst damage. Odin feels excellent for those types of matchups. The higher the health pool, the better Odin gets. So yeah, this is great for Odin. He's basically made for stuff like this. So we have this Photon here. She was actually a relatively fun fight with the objectives. None of the objectives were necessarily painful because most of them offered options that are typically good for Photon, you know, like Black Cat and Bullseye and stuff like that. So yeah, I like this fight and doing it with Odin was a nice little refresher of that. I almost said Summer of Pain, but it's not Summer of Pain. Even though I just call all of this content Summer of Pain, Eternity of Pain, EOP style content. That's just my default for it is EOP. So yeah, it was a nice little walk down memory lane. And it also showed me how powerful Odin is because I don't have Odin ranked up on my main account. And I decided to rank him up on my free to play account because I, I like Odin and I have liked Odin for a while. So I figured it was best for me to rank him up on here because if I regret it on my main account, I might, you know, have wanted to rank somebody else up and then ranked Odin and then I have to wait further. Whereas on Fiker Miker, even if I regret it, it doesn't matter because of the account diversity. And that's really the important thing at the end of the day is keeping that account diversity for as long as I can. There's always going to be some overlap, but as long as I can avoid it for like the major rank ups, like seven star rank threes and seven star rank twos, stuff like that, then I'm fine. Even if there is some overlap, which there already is with like my, my Onslaught and my Venom, I have some overlap there. That's fine because Venom was so long ago on Fiker Miker that I just got him at rank three now on my main account. So it doesn't feel like some sort of significant overlap because he was ranked up so long ago. So it doesn't matter. And then Onslaught, kind of the same thing. I had him up at rank three way before I even had a seven star Onslaught on my main account. So it's good. And I like having champs like Odin ranked up. And the newest rank three that I got is someone in that category. Although I do want them on my main account, I got them on my free-to-play account and I'm very excited to use them at rank three. And you'll see them at the end of the video here. We're getting pretty close to that. We just need to throw one more special two with Odin here and Photon will be down. Odin, very tanky in this fight. Even though we've taken some block damage, he still has over 80% of his health left. So now I'm just waiting for the stage fright node to go away. One more special two and that is Photon down. Odin just incredible for fights like this really really solid for this type of content so now we have what i consider to be the most annoying fight is this mole man here i'm going in with onslaught and i tried to employ a unique strategy to rush to my special two and get dgens going but because of this ai because of the stun immunity node mole man just doesn't want to play so the goal here is to get hit by special ones to build up neuroshocks without using my own special one and then essentially just get hit for more power. So right here, I'm trying to bait a special one and he just doesn't want to go for it. I, I throw a heavy into the air, doesn't reach. So now I have these degens that are about to all fall off and it really sucks because all of that work was essentially for absolutely nothing. I'm slightly panicking here. I'm throwing heavies into the air, but then I kind of get my bearings and I just reset a little bit. I manipulate his AI to kind of leave me alone because I just needed a second to breathe because I had thrown two heavies into the air and nothing happened. So I was like, okay, let's let's relax here for a second. We don't need to panic or anything. Let's just keep him blocking. Don't really do anything. And then we reset and we go back in, restart the strategy. So now that's what, that's what we're doing right now. So I think I get hit by this special one. No, I don't. I, I think I might get hit by one towards the latter half of this fight. Or maybe I just forget the strategy entirely. Who knows? I'm not exactly sure. I go for a special one of my own here just to build up some Neuroshocks. Ideally, like I mentioned, he would throw these special attacks with Degen and not Neuroshock. But of course, his AI 
It just doesn't want to play. And if it's not willing to play ball, like I mentioned on my live stream, it doesn't matter how well you're playing in this fight. If Mole Man is just reluctant to throw specials and dash at you, it doesn't really matter. So that's why champions like Kate, who have that immediate access to powerful damage over time, they're so good for this because there's no ramp up required. See, like right here, I'm just about to get to my special two and boom, he doesn't throw a special. I lose all my power and we just have to restart back from square one. I did get this fight down in like two minutes when he was the weekly boss and I was able to get the perfect run with Onslaught. But in content like this where he's a mini boss and I've already worked through two other fights to get here, if the strategy doesn't work, I'm not going to worry about it. I do end up getting the degens here, but unfortunately the tranquility node lines up and I don't get the, what's it called? I don't get the special bait, but I did get a heavy off when he had zero monster mass. So now it's just a game of keeping the degens up. So now that I have some degens up, that is going to be the main source of damage here. I'm just baiting as many special ones as I can, trying to get him to throw them so we can take that massive burst of degen damage. Throwing my special one now because even with the hubris protection node, the special one is going to deal a lot of damage. And now at this point, I'm just trying to see if I can rush back to my relic to re refresh my degen. And unfortunately, I'm just a second too short, but that's fine. We got a lot of damage off there. We took off a lot of time from this fight because without those degens, this fight would have taken so much longer. So very, very fortunate to have lined that up properly and gotten the degens off for even just a minute or so. That minute saved me maybe three or four minutes in the long run. So Onslaught works very well here if Mole Man is willing to cooperate with you. So just a couple of more special ones here. I throw this special one into the air just to get some more Neuroshocks on him and to toss that special because I'm going to lose it anyway. And now I just need him to throw this special one and right after, he's gone. Boom, there he goes. So Onslaught, very good for that fight. And Onslaught is also very good for this fight, this infamous Iron Man. This fight does go a lot better than the fight went on my main account. I didn't play it as well with Onslaught when I first fought it. I did get it down as a solo, but... This run with Onslaught, I have a lot more understanding of what to do here with Onslaught specifically and like how I should manage his heavy attacks and all of his Neuroshocks and whatnot. So right now I'm just building up some Neuros. I think I go for two special ones and then I end up going for a special two after a very, very large Fury bonus. This fight has run and gun, which gives you a Fury passive whenever you dash forward, but you lose those Fury passives when you dash back. So ideally and Typically, you're going to have one of those passives active at all times, but there is a chance that you can get two and eat, if you're lucky, three. If the opponent is going for parries and re-parries, you might be able to get three off. It just depends. So I go for a clutch intercept there, land the heavy right after I finish the relic, and those degens are taking for a lot of damage. So now, unfortunately, I doom, he just doesn't play ball. I'm baiting the special and he just does not want to do anything. He doesn't go for any heavies and I lose the degen. So all of that work to get that degen lined up, it just meant nothing. So that's super unfortunate, but it is what it is. We are building up to, I believe another special too, because I already have a couple of neuros and I don't really think I need any more. Oh, I go for a special one here, okay? If you ignore me, I'm completely lying. <laughs> I go for a special one here and then I definitely build up to a special two after this. So I go for a light, light, heavy right out of the stun, just trying to get him to throw that special two so I can throw my special two. We go for a dash in combo and then boom, get another dash in right there. So now these DJs are for sure going to knock him out. And yeah, that is curtains for infamous Iron Man. So that is the Summer of Suffering Gauntlet on my free to play account, both runs fully itemless and all solos. So good stuff for me. We also have a Titan Crystal to open. That's what we're gonna do right now is go open the Titan Crystal after I claim these objectives and claim the Catalyst. I think I only claim one of them because I didn't need to claim all of them at that current juncture because my Titan Crystal was going to indicate who I ended up taking to rank three. So I just claimed the 5,000 shard one because that's all I needed for a Titan. I ended up picking the Cosmic Catalyst, a little bit of foreshadowing there. And then we go open this Titan Crystal. And then right after this, you'll see an image of who I took up to rank three. 
So lots of good options in here. I'm not going to go through the whole list because I end up spinning and tapping this pretty quickly. And I end up landing on a seven-star version of Arcade. And I'm very happy about that. I like Arcade quite a bit. Arcade is one of the champions that I wanted on my free-to-play account. So I'm happy to have him here. He's definitely going to rank two. But speaking of rank-ups, this is my new rank three, Superior Iron Man. Like I've mentioned, I love Superior Iron Man, and I really want him on my main account. I was lucky enough to get him on my free-to-play account a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, and I just fell in love with him. So he's up at rank three. He's an absolute monster, and you can expect a showcase with him coming in the near future. So thank you all very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you have not already, and hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.